Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video in the series where we are building patches from scratch on the Behringer DeepMind 6. So in this video, I'd like to aim for a kind of sparkly sequence kind of patch. You know, the kind of patch that's sort of plucky and slightly shiny and that works really nicely when you're running it in arpeggiator. Uh, so with that in mind, let's hit prog and compare to get to our initialized patch, and let's get building. Now, before we do anything else, what I want to start off by doing is establishing that pluckiness to the sound. So at the moment, kind of got uh, an organ type attack with uh, a bit of a release there. We don't actually want it to sustain at all when you hold down the note. It doesn't matter how long you hold down the note, I want a pluck kind of sound. So heading over to the VCA envelope, I'm just going to turn my sustain all the way down to zero. That means that no matter whether I hold down the note or not, it's always going to decay to zero. Uh, the other thing I want to do is kind of balance the uh, decay and the release so they last the same amount of time at the moment. They are, they're both on uh, 128 here. I think I want it a little bit shorter, so maybe just try, let's try 100-ish. You can do this on the sliders as well, but just for fine tuning, you can use the uh, parameter knob instead. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so um, because I've kind of got this goal in mind of wanting to use it with an arpeggiator, let's actually turn on the arpeggiator, switch on hold mode so that I don't have to keep playing anything. And let's set one going and we can work to that kind of idea. Already that's kind of a cool sound, you know, you can arpeggiate a C minor chord with almost anything and it sounds good. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the oscillators. So oscillator one at the moment, um, we're hearing both waveforms here, both the sawtooth and the pulse wave. Uh, the sawtooth is kind of brassy and, and sharp and it, obviously it's a, it's a great sound, but I wouldn't call it sparkly. Um, so on the other hand, the pulse wave immediately has that kind of lovely sort of for me, it's actually a bit reminiscent of of, uh, uh, of a sort of 8-bit computer games as well, that kind of sparkliness with the arpeggiator that sort of calls out to me, so I'm going to go with that there. Um, of course, then we've also got the option to adjust the pulse width modulation. I guess we'd probably want to have it modulating with an LFO. Shall we do that? Okay, let's... Uh, head over into our edit screen here for the oscillator. Uh, we've got the pulse width modulation source here. Let's set it to one of our LFOs. Um, probably don't want to have any pitch mod, so I, I don't mind using an LFO one, which I usually save for pitch mod, but let's uh, not for the moment. So let's, let's give that a little bit of a boost. At the moment, LFO one's running really slowly. So we could go higher and get that kind of Coursing, or we could go lower and just get that sort of evolution of the sound. Maybe ever so. It's a bit ravey up there, isn't it? So let's maybe go slower, maybe a bit faster than it was to begin with, so you can kind of hear it changing, but it's not so obvious. Yeah, something like that. That's nice. Okay, so uh, that's oscillator one. Let's also bring in oscillator two. So we'll just bring the level up here. So at the moment it's an octave down. I don't really want that on it. See, that's really nice with a bit of detuning. But what might be more interesting is to actually make use of the oscillator sync here. So if we set these um, absolutely in tune, I'll just turn off um, oscillator one for a second. If we turn on sync when they're absolutely in tune, we can't hear any change at all. Yeah, there might be the slightest change, but essentially there's no change at all. So what oscillator sync essentially does is every time that oscillator one completes one of its waveforms, it forces oscillator two to complete its waveform as well and sort of restart. Now, when they're in tune, that means you you don't get any change. But as soon as you start changing the pitch of the synced oscillator, that means that it's either got slightly further through one of its oscillations, so it's sort of gone through one oscillation and then started another one, or it hasn't quite finished the first one, but then it's been forced to reset um, regardless. And that basically gives you new wave shapes. So you can use the pitch. To get these different sort of change and up at the top here we've got this lovely 
around here. It's lovely sort of sparkly things happening. So let's find the start of that sparkle. Somewhere around there. And then let's head into the edit screen here, go to oscillator two, and I'm gonna change the pitch mod source to LFO two. So that means we're also gonna be moving this pitch knob a bit. So if we turn up the pitch mod just on oscillator two now, and here we've got all those lovely, that's just lovely, sparkly kind of sounds happening there. Um, it's really slow at the moment. Like it becomes an obvious sync sound there. If we set just slow, it's just this evolution of the sound. That's really pretty. And if we bring our first oscillator back in, because these two LFOs are running at different times and they're both evolving their sounds, it's just got this overlapping thing happening. Really pretty. Uh, let's change this chord. I'm bored of it now. Let's maybe not just go to another minor chord, shall we? Let's try that. Okay. Um, so that's a nice start. Now, the other thing that Oscillator 2 has is this tone mod control, which uh, does some interesting sort of sort of inter-pulse waveforming. I don't really know how to describe it. It's all like pulse width modulation, but uneven. This can also bring in some really nice metallic sounds. Let's see. Like that, it's probably doesn't need to be quite as loud. You kind of get those sort of vocal, almost digital things happening in there, which are really kind of pretty. Lovely. Okay, so um, although I want this kind of shiny. I don't want it to be too shiny, so let's actually turn on the filter. Now, because I kind of want to have that sort of fizziness, I'm going to go two pole today. And let's just... That's nice. And let's just bring up the resonance, see if we can accentuate just the corner of that to get a little bit more sparkle there. That's nice. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm also going to maybe give a little bit of filter envelope. But again, if we go head over here, let's make it always jump down to zero and let's make it really short. So it's just like a little ping on the front of the note. So that's without anything. We can just bring that little pinging. And we'll do the same with the release as well and get more ping by turning up the envelope range. None. Don't need much. And again, this, this resonance is also kind of accentuating that. Cool. Uh, let's try a different chord, shall we? I can't deal with two happy chords at the moment. Let's maybe... Yeah, something like that. Okay, cool. Um, okay, let's go into the VCA edit here and let's take a look at the pan spread. So the pan spread means that each of these voices is going to be panned randomly each time, uh, which is definitely going to help to the sparkiness. So let's turn it up. Oh yeah. Lovely. Isn't that pretty? Really nice. The other thing I'm going to do here, um, as I quite often do, is I'm just going to turn down the vo velocity sensitivity here which just means that there's slightly more even response depending on how hit you hit how how hit you hard how hard you hit uh, the keys and what that does generally speaking it just means that the sound is a little bit louder yeah that's nice I kind of wonder what would be not, whether we should put a little bit of LFO sweep 
on the uh, filter. Should we try that? Uh, which of the two is running slower? Uh, they're both running pretty slow. Uh, so by default, the LFO here is LFO2. We'll give that a go. Again, don't need too much movement, but that's quite pretty. The other thing we might want to think about is the uh, keyboard tracking for the VCF as well. So that means that higher notes will get brighter because it'll open up the filter the higher up you go. So let's just try that a little bit. Again, probably don't need much. Discretion is the better part of Valor and all that. Oh, that's pretty. Just a little bit more sparkle at the top end there. So, just out of interest, let's hear what this sounds like if the overall sound is a lot darker. Oh, that's nice, actually. I like that a lot. Problem is, I also like that a lot. Uh, okay, so how about we assign the filter cutoff to our mod wheel. Uh, that way we can have this as the default sound and then we can turn down the mod wheel to get the darker sound perhaps. Let's give that a go. So for that, um, you can't by default just map the mod wheel to the cutoff frequency. You can map it to the LFO depth, but not to the overall frequency. So in order to map this to this slider, we're gonna to have to use the mod matrix. So if we go into the mod matrix, we can see here that we've got a number of sources, uh, a number of destinations, and then we've got a depth that we can apply to those two things. So our source wants to be our mod wheel. Let's change this chord, shall we? Uh, back to C minor. Um, so our source wants to be the mod wheel. Our destination wants to be our VCF cutoff, and the depth we want to be negative. Now. You can scroll through on this screen and find the thing that you wanted to do, but there's a really neat trick that they've implemented on this synth that I really, really love. And that's if you hold down the mod button when you're on the right um, line here, you move your source and it automatically detects it, and then you can move your destination. And for the most part, that just kind of works and it automatically detects it. There are a couple of quirks here and there that you need to sort of learn what the shortcut is but generally speaking, that just works. So what we can do now is we can turn our mod wheel up full. Obviously no change at the moment because we haven't adjusted the depth. So in this case, we want the depth to be negative because we want to turn down this control. So we could just turn it down and find that point that we liked. Somewhere like that. Now we have control over that, which is cool. I wonder what it would sound like if we turned up the resonance a bit when we have the mod wheel turned up and get more of that sort of um, acid thing happening. Again, let's just try it. So we'll move on to the next line in our mod matrix. We'll hold down mod. We'll move our mod wheel to say that we want that to be our source. We'll just touch resonance there to say that's what we want to be our destination. And we'll scroll across to the depth here, make sure that our mod wheel is on full. And just turn it up. It's starting to get that sort of vocal resonance. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay, cool. Uh, new chord. It's a weird one. Okay, uh, right. Let us talk about effects because obviously this sort of sound is just dying for some reverb and some delay. So let's head into our effects here. Now, we need to be a bit careful here if we're gonna have reverb and delay because if we have our effects just in a line, which is what this is doing here, so if we have reverb into delay, that means that just the reverb gets delayed. And if we have delay into reverb, 
then your original sound doesn't easily get uh, delayed. But what we can do if we head over to this uh, area here is we can scroll through different configurations of effects. And what I'm looking for, here we go, is a configuration where the last two effects are in parallel, which means that we can have the reverb and the delay uh, taking their own paths out of the effects unit, essentially, which means that you get a pure reverb and a pure delay, not a reverb going into a delay or a delay going into a reverb, which is what we're after. Okay, so let's get a reverb happening first. I'm a big fan of the plate reverb. And you can hear why. It's just gorgeous. Um, okay, so the level's probably too high at the moment. We'll adjust that in a second. Let's just go into fine-tune the parameters first. Uh, Pre-delay is fine. Decay. Is that a bit too long? Yeah, let's turn it down just a little bit. Yeah, keep the size on full. It's a bit bright at the moment, so we'll just turn down the damping a little bit. Uh, low cut, is there too much low, cut, low end build up here? Not very much, but just dialing out just brings the emphasis up a bit. High cut again, um, so on top of the dampening, let's just turn down the high end on the reverb full stop. Yeah, okay, that's nicer. Uh, back into the effects menu here, and let's adjust the level so that it's not quite as overbearing. Don't want the reverb to define the sound so much, as enhance it. Okay, there's a spot just around here where it becomes really obvious. You just kind of want to find that spot where like, you definitely know there's reverb, but it's not part of the sound, it's just enhancing it. Okay, that's nice. Uh, new chord. Shall we try a uh, uh, seventh chord like that? Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so I also want a delay, which is for some reason all the way near the end. Okay, so that's a bit of a mess at the moment. Quite a beautiful mess, but it's still a mess. And the reason for that is that the delay time is not synchronized with our arpeggiator. And because we want this to be a uh, sound which is especially useful for arpeggiation, what we can do is we can go to this time parameter here. And when you get right way down to the bottom, it gets to this section where it can be defined in terms of um, the arpeggiator uh, bar length, essentially. I'm going to turn the mode here onto a uh, stereo because we've got quite a lot of panning. We want to take advantage of that kind of movement. And then we've got this factor L and this factor R, which basically will change. So we're basing it around a quarter note, but we can change that a little bit. So now the right hand side, you can obviously really obviously hear that. It's now sort of two thirds. So you get this massive opening up of the, of the space. Uh, low cut, let's do as we did with the reverb, just take some bottom end out somewhere just to take the subs out. And it gets pretty bright at the moment. And we've got this feedback. Uh, it's the feedback left. So it's a feedback low cut. So uh, leave that as it is. Uh, then we've got the feedback high cut, so this allows each repeat to get a bit darker. so it doesn't sit around cluttering everything up. Cool, and then back into here, and let's drop that down to a level again, which isn't quite so overbearing. Maybe a little bit more of the, the delay. Okay, let's see how that sounds. Ah, oh, that reverb sounds really good <laughs> when it's on that lower. Do you know what? I could almost... It would always be nice to have more reverb at that stage, which 
believe it or not, because of the mod matrix, is something we can do. So let's do that, shall we? So again, into our mod matrix, our source again is going to be our mod wheel. But this time, let's just check. So the reverb is on slot three in our FX. Okay, so our destination in this case is right near the end. It's, you get to the point in... Yeah, you get to the point here um, in your destinations where you get to a effect using the mod matrix, individual uh, parameters on the effects, which of course is, is crazy. And yeah, sometimes, you know, it, you can go overboard with this kind of stuff, but if we get, uh, where is it, effects, three level, here we go. Um, so we want this to be more reverby, so let's turn this up like we did before, and let's just find the point. Something like that. So if we turn down, we've got that basic sound. As we turn it up, we also get more reverb now. It gets sort of swampier and starrier. And that's cool. Uh, okay. Just have interest. Noise level. Could we introduce some noise into this? You don't want it in there all the time, do you? But fading in and out now and again is kind of cool. What's that sound when it's darker? Equally as cool. Okay, uh, right. Uh, I never like really reaching for sliders during a performance, so how about... Okay, so we don't really need a pitch bed for this kind of sound. Mm, um, so let's turn off the pitch bend act as a pitch bend. Uh, so to do that, we can go into the poly menu here, uh, click across and we get to the pitch bend range plus and minus. So let's turn that down to zero uh, on both of them. Like that. Uh, so what that means now is my pitch bend is not going to do anything, which is what I wanted. Uh, so then let's go into the mod matrix, find an empty slot and we'll hold it down, hit our pitch bend. Let's pick that up and then hold, uh, hold it down, carry on, and hit the noise level. And then, same as before, we'll turn our pitch bend up and we'll bring the slider up. And now we've got the noise on the pitch mod instead. This lovely plucky, almost kind of woody sound that we can bring in by turning up the mod wheel. That's a fun patch. Okay, guys, that's the patch. Um, it was a fun one to build, so I hope you enjoyed watching it as well. If you did, make sure you give the video the good old like, and also make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos on the DeepMind and all the other synth stuff that we are putting out as well. If you've got a suggestion for a type of patch that you would like to see me build, then also please leave that down in the comments um, because I'm happy to take requests. It's a very versatile synth, so we can do all sorts of stuff. So I am uh, happy uh, for you to let me know what you would like to see on the channel. Other than that, take care, guys, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.